folks, welcome back to the channel. Starting off in the office here a bit today, my Husky furnished office. So no need to go to fancy uh, furniture stores when you can just shop for everything you need for an office at Home Depot. But uh, yeah, works out really well. Printer station, cabinet above, all Husky. But uh, anyway, get back on track. This is part eight of the electric conversion for the 1974 Super Beetle. And I uh, got some electric, more electric components in a couple days ago. Pretty exciting. And uh, let's go over what I've got here. This is the AC charger. This is going to convert the 230 volts AC coming from the wall charger plug-in that I showed in the last video where I flip open the fuel door, plug it in. And this is going to convert it down to 150 volts DC uh, to charge the battery pack up. This is a 3.3 kilowatt unit and I have two of them, another 3.3. So these are gonna be wired in parallel, giving me a total charge capacity when I plug into a, like a 30 amp, 40 amp wall charger of 6.6 .6 kilowatts to charge a battery pack up quick. Uh, right next to that's a DC to DC converter. So as I explained in one of my last videos, I have to have 12 volts DC to run the electronic, uh, the contactors and the control box and the radio, the headlights, and all that stuff. And I'll replace the big lead acid with a nice lightweight lithium battery that's ready to go. But this DC DC converter, so this is gonna to connect to the 115 volts DC battery pack and convert it down to 12 volts DC. So this is like an EV's uh, version of a regular car alternator that you'd have on a gas or a diesel. Uh, back here, I have my cooling unit. Um, as I showed in a previous video too, I have my motor controller inverter um, that has water cooling on it. So this is going to be the radiator. Um, flip it over here. So that's going to be the fan that's just going to come on with the key at a run just constant. And uh, the water will circulate by this pump and uh, hold some uh, radiator fluid, uh, glycol, in there and then circulate it through the motor controller chiller plate then through the radiator and then back, so complete the circuit. But uh, pretty excited to get this installed. Um, here's my parts box. I have my gauge for the uh, dashboard showing my battery usage. And that connects on to the shunt uh, that I showed in the previous video. And I have my Prius accelerator pedal. So I might get to install that today. Uh, I'll chop out the regular uh, gas pedal that's in the car and then this mounts up onto the wall and uh, this is going to be nice and then there's the wiring connection to go back to the motor controller. That finishes up that. Pretty excited to get all that stuff installed but uh, let's get back in the shop. I think today's project what I'm going to do is run the high voltage cable, my orange cable. I need to run two wires from the front underneath the hood battery pack um, to the rear to the contactor box and that's where the contactor box is going to live I'm going to raise it up a little bit and make some kind of stand to go a little bit of a progress update uh, I've got the high voltage wires uh, ready to go and put the connectors on for this clip onto the side of the battery pack but I tried to run the wires through the uh, heating channel and uh, the heating channel is nice and wide until it gets up to right there and then it necks down to like an inch, inch and a half pipe and goes up uh, through the A pillar. So there was not enough room to run that thick cable. So I decided to uh, bring it right into the uh, toe area there with some gland nuts. And then I'll tuck it in tighter here with some clips on it, put some abrasive uh, abrasion resistant covering over the wires and then bring it up inside that way. And also, I have a shorter wire run. Got the heater mounted uh, behind the seat. My plan was originally to put it up in this area, but it would have hung down too far, just want to look right. So I mounted it right under the rear seat here, uh, nice and solid. And then my wire is going to go right into the control box. I did fabricate some metal brackets here, and then also a platform right over there for the contactor box control boxes sit right on top so I fabricated that bent it up welded it to the floor and this is where my battery is going to go right in between the heater and I have a velcro strap that will hold it in nice and neat the contactor control box sitting on top of that platform that I made and then I have my 12 volt uh, cutoff switch here 
cut off the 12 volt battery and then my high voltage 150 volts DC uh, cut off switch so that'd be real nice just reach behind the driver's side seat cut all the power off to the vehicle should there be any maintenance needs to be done or in an emergency coming around to the back the wires to the AC chargers and these will be wired directly to the uh, plug socket for the wall charger 6.6 .6 kilowatts of charging power um, and then I'll go into the CAN bus and program it that it'll cut off and have a charging curve comes up and ramps off at 150 volts DC. Next up is to install the Prius accelerator pedal, which is shown here. Um, pretty slick little unit. Uh, three wires go to it, so you got your plus five volts from the motor controller, you got your ground from the motor controller, and then uh, the center pin is your wiper uh, that gives different voltage reading to the motor controller based on how far you push the pedal down. And then I'll also program the motor controller that is gonna do regenerative braking. So when I let off the pedal, it's gonna apply braking to the rear wheels. Uh, the uh, three-phase motor becomes a generator and puts power back into the batteries, which is really cool. But uh, if I turn this up uh, in a motor controller by the programming, I could have one pedal driving. Uh, not hardly any need to even press the brake pedal, which is gonna be really cool. So the next step is to take the old dinosaur gas pedal out disconnect the linkage goes back to the original engine throttle and then mount this up onto the firewall or the header wall whatever you want to call it somehow i'll have to fashion a little bracket uh bend it up and then probably weld it or rib nut it in so finish up the pedal uh, mount the metal plate fabricated it up welded it to the panel put the two bolts in and this is so much better than the original Volkswagen stamped steel uh, pedal, flimsy. It would push the cable and go up against a roller. But uh, I'm really looking forward to uh, this pedal arrangement because I really like the Volkswagen original OEM clutch and brake setup. It's, it's very well spaced. And then to have the Toyota Prius pedal added to that, uh, it's gonna be really nice. Some more progress, got all the cables mocked up and I have battery boxes sitting in place. The rear one, uh, these are empty. I'm still waiting for my BMS to come in so I can get that hooked up and then slide the drawers in or the batteries, the Tesla S batteries into the box and get those built. But I do have the 90 degree Amphenol quick connects already done. And all you do is uh, to disconnect, you just push this button in on the side pop it off so that's gonna be really nice and I got all my cables all mocked up ready to go all finished um, with all the crimping done uh, and the shrink tubing put on and everything's ready to go into the box and then in the front of the car got the front battery box that's what that looks like now that's perfect and again the right angle uh, Amphenol quick connects for the 150 volts DC. Spent some time yesterday uh, working on the wiring, cleaning up the wiring, putting sheathing on everything, and uh, looking pretty good here in the back. And I got the junction box all done. And then uh, this is the wiring harness that goes into the top of the motor control. It'll plug in right about there. And still waiting on my clutch. Um, ordered it in December, still not in, so can't put the motor in until you have the clutch. Finished up everything in the control box, and uh, I'll open that up in a second, but that goes underneath the seat so you won't even see it. Uh, but here's the wiring diagram, um, and thanks to Michael at EV West who produced this drawing, but uh, I haven't found an actual drawing that covers everything. So uh, if you're using this, I know a few of you commented you're in the process of building uh, or doing an electric conversion. Um, this drawing is a good reference point, but it's not totally accurate uh, for what I'm doing. Um, as an example, uh, here, uh, pin number 24 on a motor controller shows going to high voltage, uh, high voltage DC, my 150 volts. And if I were to put 150 volts on pin 24, it would burn up the logic board inside the inverter. Um, that's bad. So this is supposed to be 12 volts. So I rewired it uh, so it's actually 12 volts. Uh, but I still need my pre-charge um, off of this key switch relay 
uh, put pre-charge onto the uh, motor controller inverter. Um, so this drawing also does not show the time delay that I need uh, for the pre-charge. So really what I want to do is when I turn the key on, I want high voltage going on to the B plus pre-charge terminal of the motor inverter. And then after about a second, I think it's like a 500 milliseconds, half a second or so, but I've got it time for about a second and a half. Then after a second and a half, click, and then I put 12 volts onto a logic board, and then we're ready to rock and roll. So we're going into the control unit, the way I designed this, uh, it just bolts down and then the lid flips open. And then I have all my terminal connections uh, here in the top of the lid. There's plenty of depth here to do it. So here's my 12 volt key. This is all bridged together. So when I turn the key on, this all becomes 12 volts. This is 12 volts all the time. And then my ground bus. And then getting in the inside of here, um, there's probably enough wire in this car right now to circle the earth one time. So if you're allergic to wiring, you definitely do not want to do an EV conversion. But uh, anyway, uh, have everything labeled. Um, to go over it real quick, it's actually fairly straightforward. Um, I have my fuse for my heater. Here's my key that's tied into up here. Um, that goes through a fuse. And then each of the chargers have their own fuse. And then DC to DC charger. That's going to take my 150 volts DC. Convert it to 12 volts so I can run uh, all the circuitry here. And then also charge my uh, little lithium battery uh, that I have in place now. Um, and also the heater blower and so on. Then come over here. Um, these are my main bus. That's my negative bus for all the negatives in the car, including the pack voltage, my big lithium batteries, the Tesla batteries. And then also the 12 volt system is grounded all through that bus and then goes to frame ground too on the body of the car. And then here's my high voltage positive um, that's going to feed uh, the DC motor controller contact. And uh, my heater is high voltage, so that comes off of there also through the fuse. And then my high voltage key, which I just explained earlier, um, that's when I click the key on. This goes on, and then here's my wire to the pre-charge to the inverter motor controller. And that's going to put uh, 150 volts on to the pre-charge circuit. And then after a period of time, like a second and a half, and I have time delay relays I picked up on Amazon here. And I have two relays here in parallel to kind of take the current. It also gives me some redundancy that if I ever lose one of these time delay circuits, uh, the other one's still going to function. So I have a little bit of a backup there. But if everything's okay, pre-charge goes on through that relay. And then after a second and a half or so, this clicks in, tells the motor controller on pin number 24 that, hey, we're ready to go, ready to rock and roll. And then if everything's good with the motor temperature, all that good stuff, then it's going to close inside the motor controller inverter and uh, actually fire the main DC, 150 volt DC contactor here to say, okay, put 150 volts total current onto the motor controller and we're ready to, ready to drive down the road. Also on the front of this, I have my uh, 12 volt battery cut off right here. Um, so if I'm parked for a period of time, I can just turn that off. And then this is my high voltage cutoff. So in an emergency or just for storage or whatever, if I want, I just reach in behind the seat here and click these off. See what else on here. Um, also, I have my negative shunt. So this is the negative from the battery. Nothing else is connected to the negative side. On a shunt, you always want your loads on the other side. And uh, my twisted pair going to my, my gauge up here uh, that I just have roughed in. Um, and that's going to monitor current coming out, current going in. So it might basically give me my battery indicator and that sort of thing. So there's a twisted pair coming off of the shunt side right there. So all of my negative loads, again, go to this bus. And then they're all tied. Everything from the entire car, negative-wise, is isolated and, and onto this bus from the main power uh, negative. I also have a current reader here. Um, this is going to be for the BMS. I don't have it wired yet. It's kind of like a donut uh, coil that goes around the battery cable. Um, and that's going to give the BMS its own current reading, how much is going in and going out of the batteries. But, um, so we can go ahead and turn it on. 
and uh, I'll go turn the key on here, my key switch. So I'll go ahead and turn that on. And you'll hear two of the relays kick in. You'll see the time delay relays activate, and after a second and a half, they'll go close. So here we go. See if we can get a shot of this. All right, so that's pretty much it. This is the brains of the system here, all the load voltage controls. It's alive! It's alive! And it is done and tested out and functional. Um, and I don't have the 150 volts, uh, the batteries, into the cases yet. So, but uh, I've run through and tested all of my low voltage circuitry and everything checks out. Um, the other thing I did up here on the dash is that I have my forward switch and my reverse switch wired in. Um, also over here, I have my fan controls uh, for my heater. And uh, this relay right here is actually the relay contact for the heater. So if I grab my switch here, kind of fell down, grab my switch, and you'll hear the blower come on and then separately the relay will click. So there's low speed, turn it off. And then there's my high speed heater. And this switch is wired in series uh, with the other thermostat switch that's inside the unit. The other thing I tested out is my wiring on the proximity and the pilot connections here. So here's my wall charger. And if I go to my flap here, my fuel filler, which I converted, the two smaller pins are actually proximity and pilot. Proximity means you're connected, and then pilot's given a signal, a uh, 12 volt signal to the charger, um, whether it be my wall charger here or public charger. So you see the display on the charger, basically it's saying go ahead and plug in the car. I'm gonna come in, plug in the car, it's in. And now waiting for car signal because I don't have high voltage on to the chargers in the back. Um, it's waiting right now to see that once it does, it will start charging. So this is all tested out. Also, um, I have a little board here mounted underneath the dash that will indicate when I'm charging. It also controls proximity uh, to the wall charger. So pretty much that ties into the motor controller back in the back, the net gain again. And so if I'm plugged in right now, and if I get into the car, and I put it in drive and take off, um, the car is not gonna engage uh, the motor at all because it can detect that this is still plugged in. So a little bit of a safety there. Still waiting on my clutch over there, but uh, I think that's gonna about wrap it up. And when I get all everything tested out, I'm gonna cover all the wiring with sheathing and, and some price and little covers. Um, so none of this will be visible under the floor mat and the carpeting. Um, when the back seat goes in, everything is going to get covered up also. But, uh, anyway, I think that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Check out my playlist for all my solar projects, everything else I've done, uh, and all my other electric type uh, related projects. But uh, let's go ahead and wrap it up, and thanks for watching.